Greetings. This lesson is on concentrations and dilutions. Okay, so uh, when I've taught this course, for some reason this subject always causes some anxiety, but if you just stop and think about the problem, uh, they're actually pretty easy. Okay, so on this, uh, this is a problem I put up on the board here. We make 100 mLs of 2 milligram per mL from a stock solution of 50 milligram per mL. Now, let's just say that you had a 100 gallon aquarium and you decided you were going to put two fish per gallon in the aquarium. Okay, so what would be the first thing you'd worry about? Would you worry about uh, how many fish are going to be in the tank at the fish store? No. You're going to worry about how many fish you need to put in your tank, right? So the first thing you're going to figure out is you have a 100 gallon uh, tank, right? And you need two fish per gallon, right? Okay, so you need 200 fish. And that's going to be your first priority is figuring out how many fish you need. Now you go shopping for your fish. Okay, so you go to the fish store and the guy says, uh, you tell him you need 200 fish. And he says, okay, well, we sell them by the gallon. Um, we pack them in there. We have uh, 50 fish per gallon. Okay, so how many gallons do you want? So you say, okay, well, let's see. I need, I need 200 fish. And you say that there are 50 fish per gallon. So that's the same as one gallon per 50 fish. Right? Okay, so... So you need four gallons of fish. So what are you going to do next? You're going to take your four gallons home, right? And then you're going to dump them in your fish tank. And then you're going to add enough water to fill your fish tank up. Okay, so you put the four gallons in the tank, and now you have your 200 fish in there. And then you just fill it up with water until you have your 100 gallons. So, of course, you, you need 96 more gallons of water. Okay, so that's no different than this problem up here, right? Okay, so in this one, the first thing you're going to worry about is how many milligrams you need. You're not going to worry about the stock solution until you figure out how many milligrams. Okay, so you need 100 ml, right? And... Uh, there's two milligram per ml. So you need 200 milligram. Sound familiar? <laughs> so now you can look to see where do you get your milligrams. Okay, so you look on the shelf and you see you have a stock solution of 50 milligram per ml. So you go, okay, I gotta get my milligrams out of that bottle, right? So go 200 milligram. And on the stock, it's one ml per 50 milligram, right? So you need four mLs. So you need four mLs of your stock solution, okay? So you have your bottle here, you put your four ml, and then you put 96 more mLs of diluent. Okay, so that's not too hard. Um, Let's do one that's a little bit more difficult. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so actually before we get on to a more difficult problem, uh, I'm going to show you another way of doing this. Uh, when I teach the class, I tell them that there's no formulas other than converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, I do tell them if they do want one formula that really comes in handy, it's this one. Okay, so V1, C1 equals V2, C2. This is a really handy formula. Okay, before you use this formula, I would hope that you would work it out the long way just so you understand exactly what you're doing. But let me show you how this works. 
Okay, so basically what it says is the volume times the concentration of one solution will equal the volume times the concentration of a, another solution that will basically have the same amount of active ingredient. Okay, so let's plug this in. So volume one on the, what we're going to be making is 100 ml. Concentration one is 2 milligram per ml. That equals V2, which we don't know. So this is our stock solution. We do know the concentration of the stock solution, which is 50 milligram per ml, right? Okay, so solving for V2, we would multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the 50 milligram per ml, and we would get 100 milliliter times 2 milligram over 1 ml, we'll put the 1 in there, times the reciprocal of this, which is 1 ml over 50 milligram. Okay, so um, this ml cancels out, that milligram cancels out, and now, uh, so we're going to have 200 divided by 50, so that gives us our 4 ml. So uh, it's a good formula to know. Um, if you don't want to use a formula, you can always just, you know, figure it out, you know, what you're actually doing. Okay. All right, so I threw a little bit of a curveball in here. So we, we're going to make a um, 300 ml of a 1% solution from a stock solution of 40 milligram per ml. Now, once again, there's two different ways we can do this. We can use, figure out how many uh, milligrams we're going to need, and then we're going to figure out how many mLs of the stock solution we need to get our milligrams. And then we'll also do it uh, with the uh, V1, C1, V2 equals V2, C2. Okay, so we need 300 mLs of a 1% solution. So let's figure out um, how many milligrams we're going to need. Okay, so we have 300 mLs, okay, it's 1%, so it's going to be a weight volume, we can tell it from the uh, stock solution, so 1% gram per mL, remember to get rid of the percent sign, we, what, we divide by 100%, right? And we said we wanted um, milligrams, right? So this would give us grams. So there's a thousand milligram per uh, gram. So that cancels out. So that will give us what, 300 divided by 100 times 1,000. So that's uh, 3,000 milligrams. Okay, so we know we need 3,000 milligrams in the 300 mLs. Now, where do we get our milligrams? We're going to get our milligrams from the stock solution, which has 40 milligrams per 1 mL. So how many mLs of the stock solution do we need? So we have 3,000 milligram and there's one ml for each of the 40 milligrams so that gives us uh, should be 75 even though you can do this stuff in your head you know if you're in the pharmacy take out the calculator and um, just to be sure you know 75 just to be sure, because it's not worth uh, trying something in your head and then having an error, okay? So you need 75 mLs of the stock. So of course, you know, we're going to put in the 75 mLs, and we need a total of 300, so that's going to leave us with 225 mLs of diluent, okay? 
So not too hard. Uh, once you know how to work with the percent sign, either adding it by multiplying by 100% or removing it by dividing by 100%, they're all pretty easy. Okay, let's just do this uh, V1C1 equals V2C2. So we've got V1C1 equals V2C2. So the volume one is going to be 300 mLs. Concentration one is 1%. 1% of 100 gram per mL. We can just also write it 1 gram per 100 mL, but just to make it fun, we'll leave the percent sign in there for now. It equals V2, which we don't know, and concentration 2 is 40 milligram per ml. Okay. So now we're going to solve for V2. So we'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the 40 milligram per ml, and that will give us 300 ml times 1% gram over ml times 1 ml over 40 milligram. Okay, so we got a bunch of different units in here. Uh, no problem. mLs cancel out. Okay, we're, we need 1 ml left on our answer, right? So let's get rid of this percent sign, divide by 100%. Okay, so that's gone. Now, our answer has to be in mLs, right? So we have to get rid of grams and milligrams. No problem. There's a thousand milligram per gram. Okay, so now we check everything. Everything is gone except the mLs. Let's hope we get 75 mLs. Okay, so we have 300 times 1, divide by 100, divide by 40, times 1,000, 75 mLs. Okay. You don't have to worry about getting all your units uh, the same. You can always convert them, you know, after you get them in the formula. I, I know a lot of uh, books you have all these different formulas, and uh, the problem with those, I think, is that it's a lot of stuff to remember. And on top of that, you have to, when you insert the data into the formula, it has to be in a certain uh, format, like either milligrams or hours or minutes or something. So a lot of times you have to convert some of your data into the format of the formula before you can even use it. If you just learn to do these things without formulas, you know, just basically writing down the units of your answer, what they give you to start with, and then the ratios, everything will always work itself out. Thank you.